Hi everyone, my name is Abu Musuza and I am the founder and chief executive officer at Village Energy. I have been fortunate enough to grow up in both rural and urban areas. While I was born in an urban middle class family, I spent a big number, a big number of my years as a child working on family coffee farms in rural areas. And as a child, it's an exciting experience being in rural areas. The stories around the fires, the early nights. But as you grow up, as you become a teenager, I started realizing the difference between urban areas and rural areas. Um, I couldn't watch my favorite television program, couldn't listen to my favorite radio program, couldn't play my Walkman. Um, and I also saw other experiences uh, where households, tiny huts were burnt down, my young friends were burnt by kerosene. As a child, this didn't make a huge impression on me. Um, but as I grew up and um, got educated in Uganda, um, learned about different forms of energy, uh, graduated um, in Makere, from Makere University in, in Uganda here in Kampala, and got my first job at Ashoka. And at Ashoka is when I first encountered um, social entrepreneurs, Ashoka fellows who are working on the issue of access of access to energy in low-income communities. One particular fellow that made an impression on me was Fabio Rosa from Brazil, who single-handedly started the rural energy revolution in Brazil. Um, and this inspired me to start reading a lot more around access to energy in, um, in rural areas. And what I discovered is that about 90% of the population was living um, in such circumstances, using kerosene as a source of energy, as a major source of energy. And this inspired me to found Village Energy while I was still working at Ashoka. And what I wanted to do was to come up with low-cost solutions to help communities, starting with my own community, to gain access to better energy sources, more consistent energy sources, and energy sources that are less costly. Um, our idea initially was to work with young people, build our own solar systems in country. Um, and while we did not succeed hugely about, uh, in, in that endeavor, we continued and started distributing imported solar systems. And what we learned very quickly was that it is extremely difficult to make a new cell because a lot of solar systems were broken in communities. For example, we, when we were installing solar systems, we, all, we, always, we always had two groups of people around the house. One of the groups was discouraging the person who, was, who had purchased the solar system we were installing, telling him that John's solar system across the road was broken and therefore they were wasting their money. Interestingly, the other half were the Johns who were pleading with us to help them fix their solar systems, check what was wrong with their solar systems. And we did this pro bono for a while. Uh, but when it started happening with our own solar systems, um, when people started calling from across the country telling us our solar systems had broken, and we went and checked it out, we discovered that 75% of the solar systems were actually broken by user error. The other 25% were genuine defects in the products. Um, and all these people could not find um, a trusted supplier of spare parts, and there was no skilled person in their communities. And so this led us to pivot our business. Um, we did a simple research and discovered that about 50% of solar systems that were installed break down and never get a repair. Um, and that's where we began uh, focusing on after sale services. Our dream is to create a more efficient solar industry because if you don't have after sale services, the industry cannot be efficient. It's difficult to scale these products if you don't have the human resource or um, a trusted system of after sales repairs and services. So we hope that we can tip this industry by building um, an expansive network of after sales service points that serve the millions of people who really, really need these solar technologies desperately. Thank you.